environmental hazard is anything in our environment that can potentially cause harm. That includes pollutants, chemical contaminants, uh, human activities such as deforestation and habitat destruction, and natural disasters like earthquakes and volcanoes. Dysentery is an inflammation of the intestines caused by either a bacteria called Shigella or protists called Entamoeba that cause bloody diarrhea, abdominal cramping, nausea, and vomiting. Dysentery is spread by uh, fecal contamination of food and water, mainly through uh, releasing untreated sewage. Um, worldwide, approximately 140 million people develop dysentery each year and about 600,000 die. Most of these deaths occur in developing countries in children under the age of five. Mesothelioma is a tumor that forms in the lining of the lungs, stomach, heart, and other organs. Malignant mesothelioma is a type of cancer that forms mainly from the inhalation of asbestos fibers. It takes a relatively long time to form after exposure to the asbestos. Um, occupational asbestos exposure accounts for most of the world's exposure to asbestos. It has been banned in industrialized companies, uh, excuse me, countries, um, and asbestos exposure has decreased as a result. Developing countries continue to use, produce, and export asbestos, however. Photochemical oxidants are formed as a result of sunlight acting on chemical compounds such as NOx and SOx. It is harmful to plant tissue, human respiratory tissue, and construction materials. Ozone is the most abundant photochemical oxidant in the troposphere, where it is harmful to plants and as uh, animals, can cause asthma and emphysema. Uh, smog is smoke and fog. And it's a mixture of oxidants and particulate matter. Photochemical smog, which is also called Los Angeles type smog and brown smog, is mostly composed of oxidants like ozone. Sulfurous smog, also called London type smog or gray smog, is mostly sulfur dioxide and other sulfate compounds that come from burning coal. Um, atmospheric brown cloud is a combination of particulate matter and ozone derived primarily from combustion of fossil fuels and combustion of biomass. Risk assessment seeks to identify a potential hazard and determine the magnitude of the potential harm. Qualitative judgments of risk are based on perception, whereas quantitative judgment of risk is based on actual data. And that risk is calculated by the probability of being exposed to a hazard times the probability of being harmed if exposed. And a lot of times perception of risk does not match the reality of that risk. The probability of that risk is the statistical likelihood of an event occurring and the probability of that event causing harm. Perception of risk, like I said, doesn't always match the reality of risk. To manage risk effectively, we need to determine how closely our perceptions match reality. For example, you're more likely statistically to die in a car wreck than a plane crash. Causes of death in the U.S. are calculated based on death statistics kept by the government. People generally perceive disasters that receive more media attention, such as a nuclear plant meltdown or a plane crash, as having a high risk factor, when statistically it's actually a low risk. The risk of a rare event that has a high likelihood of causing harm can be equal to the risk of a common event that has a low likelihood of causing harm. Calculations for quantitative risk use tremendous amounts of data from acute and chronic dose response experiments, retrospective studies and prospective studies, estimates of concentrations of a chemical found in nature, its roots of exposure, its solubility, its persistence, and the potential for the chemical to bioaccumulate or biomagnify. Uh, risk acceptance is the level of risk that can be tolerated. The EPA says a one in a million risk is acceptable for most environmental hazards. Uh, this is very controversial and open to personal preferences of risk acceptance. Some people are um, more cautious than others. And it's based on environmental science, economics, and worldviews. 
Now, risk management seeks to balance possible harm against other considerations. It integrates scientific data on risk assessment and the analysis of acceptable levels of risk with a number of additional factors. So it looks at also economic, social, ethical, and political issues. It is regulated by local, national, or international agencies. So like, for example, the amount of arsenic that can be found in drinking water. Um, and a balance must be struck between scientific data and economic interests. Uh, there are about 80,000 registered chemicals in the world that are not regulated in the same way around the globe. The innocent until proven guilty principle is based on the philosophy that a potential hazard should not be considered a hazard until the scientific data can definitively demonstrate that a potential hazard actually causes harm. This allows beneficial chemicals to be introduced more quickly. However, harmful chemicals can affect humans or wildlife for decades before sufficient scientific evidence accumulates to confirm that they are harmful. So this is the uh, principle that's used in the United States. The precautionary principle is based on the philosophy that when a hazard is plausible but not yet certain, we should take actions to reduce or remove the hazard. So there's a trade-off between greater secured safety with a slower introduction of beneficial chemicals versus greater potential risk with a greater rate of discovery of helpful chemicals. This was instituted in the EU in 2000. Uh, the Stockholm Convention of 2000 is an agreement between 127 nations to restrict the global use of some chemicals. They produced a list of 12 chemicals known as the Dirty Dozen to be banned, phased out, or reduced. This includes DDT, PCBs, uh, other pesticides, and byproducts of manufacturing, and they're all endocrine disruptors. Uh, REACH was established in 2007 by 27 nations of the EU to regulate chemicals. Uh, and REACH stands for Registration, Evaluation, Authorization, and Restriction of Chemicals. It embraces the precautionary principle by putting more responsibility on chemical manufacturers to confirm that chemicals used in the environment pose no risk to people or the environment, and it's being phased in over several years to permit sufficient time for chemical manufacturers to complete the required testing. Uh, there are three major categories of risks that can harm human health, physical, biological, and chemical. Biological risks are associated with disease, a disease being any impaired function of the body with a characteristic set of symptoms. Biological risks cause the most human deaths, more than um, percentage of all world deaths. Uh, infectious diseases are those that are caused by infectious agents known as pathogens. Pathogens include viruses, bacteria, protists, and parasitic worms. Six types of illnesses that account for 94% of infectious disease deaths. Uh, the top three are respiratory infections, AIDS, and diarrheal diseases. The bottom three are tuberculosis, malaria, and childhood diseases like uh, measles. Chronic diseases slowly impair the functioning of a person's body, an example being heart disease or cancer, whereas acute diseases rapidly impair the functioning of a person's body, uh, an example would be Ebola. Top risk factors in low-income countries leading to chronic diseases are linked to poverty such as unsafe drinking water, poor sanitation, and malnutrition. Malnourished children are more likely to succumb to pneumonia or diarrhea, Risk factors in high-income countries include tobacco, less active lifestyles, poor nutrition, overeating, high blood pressure, and obesity. Uh, an epidemic is when a pathogen causes a rapid increase in disease. A pandemic occurs over a large geographic region, such as an entire continent. A uh, plague, also known as bubonic plague, or the Black Death, is caused by a bacterium, Yersinia pestis, that is carried by fleas and transmitted by their bite. Uh, victims experience swollen glands, black spots on the skin, and extreme pain. Uh, plague killed nearly a quarter of the European population in the 1300s. 
And the last major pandemic was in Asia in the 1990s, and uh, small outbreaks still occur occasionally. Uh, malaria is caused by an infection from one of several protists in the genus Plasmodium. It spends one life stage in a mosquito, which is its vector, and the other inside a human. Regions hardest hit include Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, Middle East, Central, and South America. It has been eradicated from the U.S. in the 1950s with the use of pesticides such as DDT. And unfortunately, once you have contracted malaria, you carry the protist with you for the rest of your life. Uh, there are now drug-resistant plasmodiums um, and insecticide-resistant mosquitoes. This is thought to be from overuse of pesticides and drugs and clearing of tropical rainforests. Uh, AIDS patients tend to be particularly vulnerable as they're all vulnerable to uh, all types of infections. Um, <clears throat> and the best prevention really is sleeping under mosquito net um, when mosquitoes are most active at night. Uh, tuberculosis is caused by a bacterium called Mycobacterium tuberculosis that primarily infects the lungs. Uh, it spreads when an infected person coughs and expels the bacteria in the air. Symptoms include weakness, night sweats, coughing up blood, and it's estimated that a third of the world's population is infected with TB and never develops symptoms. Nine million people contract it annually, and two million people die from it. It can be treated with a year-long course of antibiotics that are readily available in developed countries. Sometimes patients stop taking their antibiotics before the last bacteria has been killed, and that will lead to the pathogen quickly rebuilding its population, which are usually the drug-resistant bacteria, leading to a drug-resistant strain of tuberculosis. And drug-resistant TB is a major concern in parts of Africa and Russia, um, where it's run rampant in their uh, penal system. Cholera is caused by a bacterium called Vibrio cholerae that infects the digestive tract. <coughs> it is spread through consuming contaminated water or food. Symptoms include watery diarrhea, nausea and vomiting, severe loss of fluids that can lead to death. Cholera is not common in industrialized countries, but developing countries continue to experience outbreaks due to lack of access to clean water and problems with sanitation infrastructure. Three to five million people contract it annually, and 100,000 to 120,000 die from it. Mortality is highest among young children. And it can easily be treated with antibiotics and fluid replacement, um, and the U.S. currently has a vaccine for it. Emergent infectious diseases are infectious diseases that were previously not described or have not been common for at least the prior 20 years. We've seen an average of one new disease emerge annually since the 1970s. And many of these pathogens have jumped from another animal host and into humans because of the ab ab ability uh, of them to mutate. Um, in the late 1970s, rare types of pneumonia and cancer began appearing in individuals with weak immune systems. This condition was eventually named Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. And in 1983, the virus was discovered that causes the weakened immune system and named the Human Immunodeficiency Virus. Now, the virus is transmitted through sex, blood transfusion, and sharing dirty needles. So it's transmitted through bodily fluids. In 2006, researchers found a genetically similar virus in chimpanzees in Cameroon. It's thought that eating primates, termed bushmeat, that's common in this part of the world, may be how the virus jumped hosts. More than 33 million people uh, are infected with HIV, and 25 million have died from AIDS-related illnesses. Many antivirals are used to reduce the risk of resistance evolution in the virus, but these drugs are very expensive. Um, when the disease was first uh, showing up in the United States, it was called GRID or gay-related immune deficiency um, because that was the population it tended to be centered in. And so they were seeing these diseases that you wouldn't normally see in healthy adults, such as bacterial, protozoal, fungal, viral diseases, and rare forms of cancer. <clears throat> um, in Africa, 
It was uh, before it was named AIDS was termed the slim disease. And the virus was simultaneously discovered in 1983 at the Pasteur Institute and 1984 at the National Cancer Institute. Um, and it later became, so it, the name was eventually uh, HIV or human, human immunodeficiency virus. Um, the global spread of AIDS peaked at three and a half million infections worldwide in 1996 and hopefully um, it will decline and, and keep declining. Uh, Ebola was discovered in 1976 in the Congo near the Ebola River. Viruses are usually named um, by where they're found. <clears throat> it infects humans and non-human primates in Central Africa. Outbreaks are sporadic, but the death rate is 50 to 89 percent. Victims experience fever, vomiting, and internal and external bleeding, and death occurs within two weeks. There are no drugs available to fight the disease, and the host is still unknown. Um, Ebola tends to break down collagen, which is the connective tissue that surrounds and supports blood vessels, liver, spleen, and lymph nodes. Um, it's called a filovirus because it looks like a string. Um, and when it breaks down collagen, it releases tissue factor, causing the blood to try to clot, resulting in continuous clotting factor until the factors that control blood clotting are depleted. And that's when the patient tends to bleed out uncontrollably. Um, and they also tend to vomit up these uh, clots of blood. Uh, mad cow disease is also known as bovine spongiform encephalopathy. <clears throat> It is a neurological disease that was first described in the 1980s. The pathogen slowly damages the nervous system and coordination is lost and then death occurs. The disease is actually called by something called prions, which are small beneficial proteins found in the brain that mutate into proteins that act as pathogens. Uh, prions are difficult to destroy by cooking. Humans who ate infected beef developed a variant called crutzfeld yakov disease, or VCJD. It was common practice in Europe at the time to feed the ground-up remains of slaughtered cattle to farm animals for additional protein. In Britain, 180,000 cattle were infected and 166 people died in 2009. Uh, British beef was banned for export in 1996 and tens of thousands of cattle were destroyed from that outbreak. It is now illegal to feed animal remains to cattle. BSE has been found in cows in the U.S. and Canada, but never in humans. Um, the Spanish flu that killed 100 million people in 1918 was a type of avian influenza caused by the H1N1 virus. It is rarely deadly to wild birds, but lethal to domesticated poultry. As of 2009, more than 400 people had been infected, and more than half of those died. Large numbers of poultry were destroyed, and it's feared that if it mutates again, it has the potential to kill 150 million people. Uh, West Nile virus lives in hundreds of species of birds and is transmitted by mosquito. It is lethal to some species of birds, horses, and humans. The first human death was in 1937 in Uganda in the West Nile region, hence the name. It causes an inflammation of the brain, leading to illness and death. Um, it may, you may have also heard it called equine uh, encephalopathy for that reason. It first appeared in New York in 1999 and quickly spread across the U.S. Uh, severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome, or SARS, is a viral respiratory illness caused by a coronavirus. It is spread when an infective person coughs and expels the virus in the air. An outbreak began in Asia in 2003 and spread to countries in North and South America and Europe. Over 700 people died and over 8,000 were infected. Symptoms include high fever, headache, body aches, dry cough, and usually pneumonia. No outbreaks have been reported since 2004. Middle East Respiratory Syndrome, or MERS, is a viral respiratory illness caused by a different coronavirus. It spread through close contact with an infected person's respiratory secretions. It likely came from an animal source in the Arabian Peninsula, 
probably a camel, and is known to be transferred from camels to humans. Symptoms include fever, cough, shortness of breath, and can lead to pneumonia and kidney failure. It has a 30 to 40 percent mortality rate. Uh, no outbreaks have been reported since 2015, and there is no vaccine available for it at this time. Uh, Zika is a virus that is spread mostly by the bite of an infected Aedes species mosquito, but can also be spread through sex and possibly blood transfusions. Zika can also be passed from mother to fetus and causes a condition called microcephaly and other brain defects and may also lead to miscarriages or, and, or stillbirths. Zika was first discovered in the Zika forest in Uganda in 1947. Outbreaks of Zika have been reported in tropical Africa, Southeast Asia, and Pacific Islands since 1952. Symptoms include fever, rash, joint and muscle pain, headaches, and red eyes. There is no vaccine available for it at this time. To combat diseases in low-income countries, the primary needs are improvements in nutrition, wider availability of clean drinking water, and proper sanitation. In high-income countries, increased physical activity, balanced diets, and limiting tobacco use are needed to improve health. Education about emerging infectious diseases needs to continue in all countries.